Welcome back. Our next guest is someone close to former President Trump, an economist and Harvard alumni. Peter Navarro served as a senior Trump administration official, including as assistant to the president. White House trade and senior economic advisor Peter Navarro. Joining me now is Peter Navarro. Trump vet Peter Navarro is leaking their own January 6th plans. Assistant to the president and director of the Office of Trade and Manufacturing Policy, Peter Navarro. So Peter Navarro just admitted out loud what 100 lawmakers were willing to do on January 6th. Former White House trade guy, Peter Navarro. As you can tell, a man often in the news, Peter Navarro, is our yeah. guest tonight, and his new book, In Trump Time, is out now. Thanks for being here. All right, great to be with you. I, I guess I am the trade guy, but but tonight I think um, it, it, I'm the January 6th guy. The In Trump Time book shows unequivocally um, that s both Stephen K. Bannon and President Trump should be exonerated any violence on Capitol Hill on January 6th. And what I show in the In Trump Time book is the, this plan we had called the Green Bay Suite, clearly between constitutional and legal lines, to basically have only legal votes counted in the election. Yep. And we had you mentioned uh, recruited... that we um, yeah. we prepared for that. So let's take a look. You mentioned this uh, this plan. Here's Steve Bannon talking sure. about it on January 6th. I keep saying the mantra. You call the play, now run the play, right? It's like the old Green Bay power sweep. It's very simple, very, just one thing leads to another, very logical, and the a victory is affirmed. So go ahead and tell sure. us in your own words, what was the plan and who was in on it besides you, Bannon, and Trump? Sure. The backstory is while I was in the administration after the election, beginning on Thanksgiving, I produced what would be an exhaustive three-volume report. I went over tens of thousands of pages of documents and proved that the election was on all likelihood stolen through fraud and election irregularities. That's the back background. On January 6th, that's, the Green Bay that's Suite false. plan— That's false, but I, I, the question for the start false. of the interview— we'll Yes, disagree it is about fine. That. But, but, but the, but that's the, the question for the start the of the interview I is— have, I just want to. I just want to make sure here that we're— Kind of going by rules of the road. The question is, yeah, and you'll you get gotta, time to talk. I know you got to say that, and and what I'm saying is that that. I don't was have to say anything, sir. I'm asking you. The question is, sure. what was the plan itself, and who was in on it? Exactly, and, and I'm going to tell you that the the plan was simply this: we had uh, over a hundred congressmen and senators on Capitol Hill ready to implement the sweep. The sweep was simply that we were going to challenge. The, the results of the election in the six battleground states, they were Michigan, Pennsylvania, uh, jo Georgia, Wisconsin, uh, uh, Nevada. And, and basically, these were the places where we believed that if the votes were sent back to those battleground states and looked at again, that there would be enough concern amongst the legislatures that m most or all of those states would decertify the election that would throw the election to the House of Representatives. And I would say to you here, Ari, that all of this, again, I was, it was in, in the lanes legally. It was prescribed by the Constitution. There is a provision to go, rather than through the Electoral College, to the House of Representatives. And all this required was peace and calm on Capitol Hill. And at 1 p.m., Ted Cruz, Senator Ted Cruz, and Gosart, a, a representative, started the Green Bay sweep beautifully, challenging the results of Arizona. Here's the most important thing I can tell you about this. The, the thing that we were trying to deal with was, was a media which refused to acknowledge any kind of possible fraud or irregularities. Right. And well, let's get into it. I've given you, Peter, I've given you, I've given you some time here, and I think you, you've, you've explained that. And I'm going to follow up here, and I, I want us to have a, a back and forth, but that involves both of us. You just described a way, yeah, you just described this plan as a way to take an election where the outcome was established by independent secretaries of state, by the voters of those states, and legal remedies have been exhausted with the Supreme Court never even taking, let alone siding with, any of the claims that you just referred to. So legally, they went nowhere. And then you're describing a way that, that the incumbent— Hold on, hold on. You will get your turn. I just let you go for a while. Let's go this back and forth, sir. Then you will use the incumbent 
losing party's power, that was the Republican Party that was losing power, to overtake and reverse that outcome. Do you realize you are describing a coup? No, I, I totally reject many of your premises there. First of all, the election was still in doubt and would be until it was certified. Second, the idea that that secretaries of state, particularly in Michigan and, and, and Pennsylvania, were like innocent parties. I mean, Jocelyn Benson and Kathy Bookfar, the secretaries of state in, in Michigan and Pennsylvania, they were put in power by George Soros for the express purpose of shifting the playing field to the Democrats. They were found in both states to have broken the law. The point here is, Ari, is that we were following the Constitution and rules of the Senate to simply get a recount of what the votes were. And we were looking for these battleground states to basically review. So, Peter, let me, let me press you on this because people don't That's always the book. people don't always hear. Yeah, Peter, book. people don't always hear directly from the folks involved. Sure. Uh, Steve Bannon, as you know, uh, is risking going to jail rather than just provide testimony about it. You, by contrast, are describing in your book uh, the, some of the same stuff. So I don't know what he's afraid of that clearly you're not. Um, but when you describe a system where after all of the legal remedies are exhausted, the people who lost just make noise and then say that they won and seize power, don't you understand? I mean, this is my question for you because I get to talk to you directly sure. here. Don't you understand that if that actually were the system, it would be dumb and dangerous. If the people who lost could just get up there and say, well, we want to do our own count, mm -hmm. not the state law recount, not what the Supreme Court provides for. Everyone remembers Bush v. Gore. There are situations where they get involved. But just people in the Trump administration decide, well, we disagree. Don't you understand why people see your whatever you want to call it? You don't want to call it a coup. Your thing where when you lose, you stay in power. They see that as really dangerous. Your presumption is the remedies were exhausted. My presumption is the remedies weren't exhausted at all. The remedy was for Vice President Pence's, the quarterback in the Green Bay sweep, to remand those votes back to the six battleground states for 10 days for a look to see if there were any okay. election irregularities or fraud. Let's get now, into that, that in your book. I'm going to read from your book. I'm going to read from your book, and then I'm going to go back to you. Uh, quickly, you said, I'm taking that contention. I don't have any contention. I, I quoted the facts yeah. that the Supreme Court you said it was, you did said not the take the case. Yeah, the, they, they in the courts, exhausted. and we that's true. But, uh, look, we can live in a world uh, where you say, we can live in a world where you say the Supreme Court is in Canada. You can say that. You have the right to say that. But the Supreme uh, Court's in uh, D.C., uh, and the Supreme uh, Court did not, did, not take, yeah. did not take these cases. Now, let's read from your book with regard to your contention about the vice president. You say, quote, sure. Pence refused to take my repeated phone calls about election irregularities despite a direct request from President Trump to do so. What was your vision that, that you would get Pence to do that which Trump couldn't get him to do? No, my only reason to talk to Vice President Mike Pence was to explain to him, as I documented in my three-volume report, that in all likelihood there was significant election fraud and irregularities across the six battleground states. I mean, these were ubiquitous uh, six dimensions of fraud. I simply wanted to brief Mike on what I had found. I had what we call the receipts, and that's all the conversation Why needed wouldn't he to listen be. to you, do you gonna... think? Why wouldn't he listen to you? Well, I talk about it in the In Trump Time book, his chief of staff, Mark Short, who is a Koch network conservative, meaning that an, he's a never Trumper, basically walled off Vice President Pence from the day Mark took a, took chief of staff's duties back in 2018. And it was a sad story. Mike was always good to me until that day. The thing about Mike's betrayal of President Trump, which is really interesting, is he never shared the legal analysis of his general counsel, Greg Jaffe right. and Mark Short, with Pat But again, that, that really, White Peter, House that brings us counsel. back, that but that brings us back to the same point. Right and this may, be, yeah. this may be relevant, sir, in future elections, which is, sure. Don't you think somebody would have thought of this if the incumbent administration, through the president or the vice president, could just cancel the election outcome because he goes down to the Senate? Well, then a lot of people would try to stay in power. We have an entire system designed to thwart, and I want to say this respectfully, but it's the truth, sure. people like you, to stop people like you who think that you can anoint yourself the reviewers of the voters, of the American people, of what they lawfully did, that you trumped the Supreme Court, no pun intended, 
People like you are what the Constitution are designed to stop, and it worked, and it did stop you, which I guess brings us to, you know, this this idea of the goals that you talk about in the book. Because, again, you're out here. Though? You worked for the president. I'm going to yeah. let you respond. But in the book, you say the goal is not to get the election overturned today. The goal is to subject Correct. the ballots to careful scrutiny and investigation. Correct. What do you yes. say to the system doing that, not through partisans like you, but in the next time, if we hear about this in the next midterms, the next election, that's what the states and the courts already do. Well, they didn't. They didn't uh, do their duty. I mean, this was a failure of the judicial branch. You keep saying that the courts rejected the claims, but everything that went they to did. the courts was rejected on process, not fact. There was no evidentiary hearings, including the Supreme Court. I mean, there were three justices yeah, you, on the Supreme Court who wanted you're, to you're look at the case. You're describing something that's but they didn't. That's, you're describing but, something but, that's very bad for your side, which is the cases were so I, I weak they didn't reach the, the merits. That we were trying to cancel the election, and you yourself just read from my book. All we wanted to, was to look at what I found. Look, Ari, the difference between me and virtually everybody else in this debate is I did the homework. I, I'm the guy who looked at thousands of pages of documents, did the analysis. I went in with an idea just trying to figure out what happened. And what, what yep. happened was a very elaborate um, the steal. And if you look at the Time Magazine Molly Ball cover story, if you read that, yep. they admit they stole it. I mean, come on, Ari. So, well, Peter, um, again, we don't, I can't fact check everything uh, in real time and also do the interview, um, but, but some of what you said is false.